Thank you everybody for being here. I'm so, so grateful I can get to sing for all of you. Let's fly, spirit. <coughs> Have you ever felt like nobody was there? Have you ever felt forgotten in the middle of nowhere? Have you ever felt like you could disappear? Like you could fall and no one would hear? Well, let that lonely feeling wash away Maybe there's a reason to believe you'll be okay Cause when you don't feel strong enough to stand You can reach, reach out your hand And oh, someone will come running And I know he'll take you home Even when the dark comes crashing through When you need a friend carry you when you're broken on the ground you will be found so let the sun come streaming in cause you'll reach up and you'll rise again if you only look around you will be found Crashing through 
Okay. Well, I'm here with Francis, Jenny, Ricky, and we're all available at your service uh, for this session. Uh, we are just enjoying it just as much as you are. The, it just feels like uh, the, the birth of holiness is, is bursting in our hearts and we're feeling it. And I could tell you are. I, I received some messages and emails from some of you today that were touched by uh, the session. I see Christine and David, they sent me their uh, letters <clears throat> that they're sending to Dale. And uh, Christine was putting some extra stamps in there <laughs> for some correspondence. And, and yeah, I heard from Seema and Muna. And we're just really grateful that you're here to open your hearts up. And, and uh, we want to just be here with you and, and really join with you in this uh, presence. And I think the, the benefit of us having a panel like this is we have had so many life experiences and dealt with so many challenges and difficulties that came our way, which were really just opportunities for us to grow and expand. And um, I think that's what Seema wrote to me this morning on her PS. She said, I, I can really feel that the Holy Spirit is stretching me. And we've had a lot of experiences of being stretched in our awareness, our consciousness being expanded through this ministry and through letting Jesus and the Holy Spirit move through our lives. So we did have um, a, an extra question that came in too from Sabine. And um, I don't know if we want to address that or just kind of open it up to in general with everybody. Do you have any feelings? Well, we could open it up and then um, it probably will lead we into probably that. will lead into that. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're here at your service. Uh, they were telling me, Jeff, you and I always wear the same color of shirts. Uh, we have the same uh, dresser, I guess. The Holy Spirit is playful with us. We do a movie gathering and then we show up day after day in the same outfit, but we haven't fun with it all. So why don't we um, just open it up, because I, I would really love today's session to be filled with interactivity where uh, you just pour your hearts out. It may be um, just miracle expressions like Teresa was sharing. It may, there may be questions or concerns. It really could be anything that you really feel touched and you feel really moved in your heart to speak about. Because we know that everyone will be blessed with your sharing and everyone is blessed with, with every question, with every miracle sharing, and with every answer. So Jeff, if you want to just keep an eye out for the electronic hands and also we can see one screen at a time but if you put your hand up and wave your hand uh, we can usually see you that way too so one way or the other we'll try to uh, get to you today sounds great yeah Barbara has her hand up go ahead Barbara okay uh, do you hear me yep yeah Thank you for, for, for letting me in. This, I, my heart is pondering and I'm quite nervous. And uh, I've been participating for almost a year and watching most of your online programs. And uh, I can see that actually I haven't been participating. Uh, uh, I have been participant participating from a distance. I just need to. Uh, I have negative thought patterns and, and, uh, and desires that is in the bottom of it. And that is to, so my fears is being rejected being judged, being humiliated, and uh, especially in front, of, in front of a group and a family or in front of you in a public. And uh, I, I just need help because I'm 
uh, from that pattern I have other negative patterns that has been rolling on as well that I need to undo so I need to I need really to speak up here and and uh, let go of my fear of speaking speak it, speaking to you and see uh, getting help from uh, to undo these undo these fears yes oh uh, that's and huge also, yeah and and also that it all i, I lose the language i i, I or most of the time i get speechless so it's easy for me to stay in the background and be distant. So if you could talk about that and help me through a little bit. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. That's the first step is what you're doing right now is when you put it out there in what seems to be a very public way, it's showing how big your heart is, how much how important this is to you to 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 be free, to escape from that pattern. And um yeah. It relates a little bit to uh I, if you remember yesterday Holly uh from Brisbane was talking about how how she'll have these sometimes flashes of anger or she'll have these uh, dark feelings and thoughts that come up and she so much wants to express them and, and release them, but sometimes she's not in an environment. She's working on a PhD, uh, she, you know, some of her friends and, and people that are around her probably wouldn't be able to take it, um, would, would miss, she was afraid that they would misinterpret uh, what she was saying and and so we were talking, and with her I was talking about journaling and how uh, Kirsten's, you know, doing journal, she did a journaling uh, workshop there too in, uh, uh, in Miami, Florida. She's got going down maybe in February to Sao Paulo, Brazil, and possibly over to Denmark. But for many people, when it's so strong, when the fear is so strong and the negative patterns are so thick, that the journaling can be like a movement, just a, a movement in the mind and a willingness to say, I'm going to at least let the, these up to myself, and I'm going to do this in front of the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to write it all out. And I'm not going to censor my language, I'm going to use whatever words uh, come, I'm not going to censor anything, because that's that critic and that censor that keeps the lid on them and keeps you from releasing them to the light. And then um, I find in smaller groups, I mean, even though I've done a lot of public talks over the years and I've been on radio stations and television shows and, and spoken in front of uh, very large groups, I have to say that I have been kind of a, a mystic who, who has a lot of lunches and dinners and, and, I, and just goes to the restaurant. I've been in so many restaurants that generally I've gone and sometimes I'm even traveling and people know I'm traveling and they write, can you pull off at the Pizza Hut uh, on exit number 44? Uh, I've never met you, but I've, I've been reading and I have to talk to you. And then they'll come and they'll sit with me at a booth for lunch, just one-on-one. -on -one. And it feels a little more safer that way. And they will actually just pour, for sometimes a couple hours, just pour out all their feelings and emotions, because bottling them up, they seem to get more uh, intense, like they're going to explode if, if they're not exposed and expressed. And I had an experience recently where I was over in Holland and I was having a, a dinner after a, a, a workshop that I had done, and there was this husband and wife, Koos and Doris over there in Holland, and they've worked with hundreds and hundreds, actually thousands of course students over the years in a very intimate, deep way doing these amazing workshops. And Koos just lets the Holy Spirit just whoosh through, whoosh through. And a lot of the people are afraid to talk to Koos. They, they're afraid to even sit with him. They, they go to Doris. 
And Doris has got these big, kind eyes, and she's as sweet as can be. And they go, well, I can't talk to Coos, but here's what, if I could talk to Coos, this is what I would tell him. <laughs> and they pour their hearts out because Doris is so sweet, and her eyes are so inviting. And, and really that's the key, is, is to go inside yourself and start to feel, where do I feel comfortable? Who do I feel comfortable talking to? Even if it's, if it's not with people, it can be with journaling, but if it is with people, then I think it's, it's good to kind of do the one-on-one the -on -one connecting. Because even spiritual community can be frightening, too frightening to the ego, and there's a lot of uh, circumstances that it just seems too threatened. You know, it's, it's got too many defense mechanisms and they're too thick. And so it sometimes starts off with just a trusting relationship with one or two people where you can just open up and share your heart. And all those lunches and dinners I've done, I've, all the Skype calls that I've had over the years, all those have been just orchestrated by the Holy Spirit to reach the mind wherever it is. And oftentimes the mind is in a pretty strong state of fear. And it has to be, the spirit has to be so, so gentle to come in there very, very gently. And, and I've also been in a lot of situations around my travels around the world where I just kind of give everything over to Jesus and sometimes the most you can offer is a smile or the most you can offer is a long hug. Um, anything more, even a word, would not be helpful. There have been so many times where I've just stayed with people and just held their hand or given them a long hug and sometimes during that long hug they start to cry and then maybe they even start to, to shake. Um, there was one time when I was in Finland and we, we were having a circle there in Finland and, and this woman, Ira, uh, who stays in contact with me, she, we, she felt so loved when we were all hugging and swaying together in a circle that she, she went into kind of like an exorcism. This, her voice changed, dropped like three octaves, and she started screaming. And the whole group was, we were like a big hula hoop. We just were, as she was screaming and convulsing, and whatever was coming through her, like, you know, Christians might say a demon or whatever. It was like the whole group was just there, and we were all like a big hula hoop. We were moving, swing, and then she came through it, and she just had tears of gratitude and she just said, what happened? I, f I feel so wonderful, I feel so grateful. <laughs> she was totally unaware uh, of what happened. But she did have an, a willingness and I think she felt a safety and an allowance in that group of all of us hugging and swaying together that she was able to let this dark thing that she had pushed way out of awareness, she was able to let it up. So just, you know, we love you so dearly and we're so grateful to have you here and speaking up. And, and I know uh, Jenny, I think, was probably one of the first ones to, mm -hmm. to work with you and, yeah. uh, and meet with you. And so, you know, that you come in in so many different ways, but Jenny would tell me about Barbro, Barbro, <laughs> Barbro. So I, that's how I first got to hear of you was uh, through all those meetings that you had with Jenny. Yeah. Yeah, it's been so beautiful. When I remember when you came to Spain to our first retreat in the new house outside Barcelona, and it was so healing. And yeah, I just feel you, Barbara, and <laughs> your heart. And and I love you know the the practice of just in a way just observing Barbara, observing that pattern of that fear fear of connecting that I hear that you're talking about and to keep uh, observing, but also to keep allowing the opportunities, the ones that come to your mind to, to connect with them and, and watch out for that ego that is saying no to the opportunities and the fear of it. So, yeah, but step by step, that's, that's really how it will, you know, start to loosen and, yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You're so lovely. I just love you. 
<laughs> yeah. And yeah. we had this common healing. I remember the issue of some deep past um, stuff around sexual abuse or whatever it was, and the whole group that came together in Spain at that retreat, everybody had that same issue. That was very profound. So, yeah. yeah. And the Holy Spirit keeps bringing you, I mean, with, with all of us, with, with Spain, I think uh, Helena has talked to me from Sweden. You know, you've, you've been graced with these beautiful witnesses and characters that the Holy Spirit keeps sending. And the Holy Spirit will just keep sending them, you know, it, as long as it takes. There is no rush with anything. You, there, uh, there is no um, standard in terms of the world. Uh, I was just reading that today. Comparison must be an ego device, for love makes none. So love is just embracing you and holding you and, and sending you witness after witness. And there's, there's no comparisons, there's no standards. You don't have to meet some kind of uh, time standard or do it as good as somebody else. You know, that love doesn't even see any of those things, doesn't even have that experience. So that's really what I, I hear you're praying for, is just to tap into that unconditional love and feel that uh, unconditional welcome. I know I can speak to, for me, you know, I, I was very shy and I had more of a solo journey to God uh, than most people that I know. Most people I live with uh, have, are using the symbol of um, many holy encounters and community, many collaborations and projects. That really wasn't my journey. I, I, I read a lot of books, um, I, I was very shy, I was at, uh, in, uh, I would say mainly in high school and university I was a loner. Um, I didn't have many friends, uh, even in high school it was a very small circle of friends. And that's the way my spiritual journey was. Uh, initially with the Course I was using it as an oracle and I was just praying and popping it open and receiving huge answers and it, it took me about five years of that before I first with much trepidation and fear uh, started going to course groups and then slowly that opened up to five groups a week and and then after a while uh, the Spirit started speaking through me and and I thought what is this? This is not at all what is a loner <laughs> wants to have is to draw attention to themselves through speaking about God. So it, it was a bit shocking and surprising every step of the way, but, but I do feel now that, that we have a great opportunity. We, that letter with, to Dale yesterday showed how even if you're in prison and you don't have mighty companions, you can still do it uh, with your willingness and determination, but, but it also is helpful when you do have those witnesses uh, coming and, and supporting you and reminding you. And I think uh, my friend Dale Crow is going to get a surprise when he gets his mailbox <laughs> in prison there for Christmas. He'll be like, what is Dale Crow, you know, is, it'll be a big surprise. But, but that will help too. That will help him um, by knowing that there's all these beautiful reflections that are, that are coming and supporting him on this journey. So. You know, we're just with you all the way and, and we know that you don't have to push yourself. You don't have to go to some kind of step or plateau or something that you're not ready for. You know, just be very gentle with yourself and, and whatever feels comfortable and easy for you, whether it's journaling or one-on-ones or whatever, you know, feel comfortable at just doing what feels comfortable to you. And don't push yourself with some kind of a, an external standard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We love you. Uh. Mm. Okay. okay, beautiful. Up next is Stephanie. Go ahead, Stephanie. Hello. Can you hear me? Hi. Yeah. Oh, hi. Yes, <laughs> hi. Hi, David, Francis, hi. Danny. Hi. hi, everyone. 
I know what is uh, um, Bapro was talking about about this feeling hot hot is um, whew, being nervous and but it feels always good to talk here um, um, yesterday when we watched the um, movie it was very like I didn't find a spot where to sit in so I can watch in peace and then um, then in the middle of it the fire alarm went on just in my room where I was sitting like it was like and and uh, I have to check what was happening and then the um, internet connection was getting bad so it was very pumpy the yesterday and um, Probably it was like my mind, I think. So, um, and uh, today I was like um, meditating and and then I came to my mind this uh, first song when Emily was singing it, Fall On Me. And I was, before I was listening to it a lot and it always touched me. And uh, uh, I remember I was looking for the, how do you translate fall on me? Because it's not like fall on me, like, like in a literal way. <laughs> I was never getting it. It was just, it touched me so, so much. And I always was singing the song fall on me. And, um, and then uh, like two hours ago, then I thought, oh, perhaps I will ask Catherine, how do you translate it? Or what does it mean? Because I didn't find it anywhere. It was always fall on me. And I said, oh, I have to figure it out now. I don't want to do it alone. And then, and uh, Catherine uh, sent me a very beautiful answer. Uh, whew. And perhaps I want to read it if it's okay. Yes, please. Uh, because when I was reading it, it was like, oh, I cried for two hours. Only. It was so touching. And I want to share this because it was very beautiful. Thank you, Catherine. Okay. So, um, um, so I asked her, can you tell me what fall on me means? Hi, Steph. Fall on me is similar to chump and I'll catch you. It is a reassurance that no matter what you do, if you got, I've got you, you're held and safe. I imagine a safety net. You can have the courage to walk the tight rope and yet still know that you will be okay if you fall. Fall on me in the song me is Andrea Bocelli, the father who will always be there for his son, no matter what. I interpreted it as God. I hope that helps. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. And that was very really beautiful, yes. And then I figure out this, it's also because yesterday in this movie, the loop, it's the loop is around me. It's not, and I notice all these loops around me and I see them and I was like this woman, you know, like I see the loops and I wake up and another loop and, and, and when fall on me, if I can fall on his hands, there are no loops anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It was very beautiful. <laughs> we have a, of that Pointer Sister song, Jump, Jump for My Love. Jump in. <laughs> oh, good. We just love you so much. We're, we're, here to love you and support you and and 
for us to see the insights, to be able to see the loops and, and start to laugh and, and not to feel caught. You know, that's mm -hmm. the thing, we want you to feel free and it does feel like to do that you have to fall. All of us have had those experiences where they feel like we're falling, falling. I remember years ago there was a, Olivia Newton-John actually did a song called Falling. Falling and I used to play it as a meditation over and over. You won't regret falling. The bruises you get falling will all fade away. Don't analyze falling. Don't try being wise falling. Forget all your plans. They're out of your hands. You're falling, falling, falling. And then blindly you go falling. The last one to know mm. falling. You suddenly see. You know, it's just a beautiful song. It's one of those real slow, soft, ballads, but it's like a, just a meditation. And, and that's what we want you to feel, is just that that's probably why you've been singing that over and over, even without knowing what it meant. You know, it's just something inside of you was, was calling on that song as a prayer, and then you were singing it, and then, then you've, Catherine helped you, oh, that's, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> and then you cried out of recognition, because mm -hmm. it's so deep, it's beyond words. In, the, in, the, in this retreat, someone said, first you have to forgive, and then you understand. Yeah, yeah. That's what it means. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, thank you, Stephanie. Thanks, Stephanie. <laughs> I'm grateful for that description. I never, I also never could figure out. Fall on me. Like, <laughs> it's a very beautiful song. <laughs> Yeah, that's beautiful. Very beautiful description. I just, I had a, a memory. I've shared it with the school before, but um, about the time I fell into Jesus's arms, um, I had just moved to LA with my dog, and um, I was in a Motel Six by myself. And I was like, it dawned on me, what have I done? Why did I move to LA in search of a a rock star career? Like, I don't, I'm, I don't want to be here. What did I do? And I, I just saw it, like, I don't want anything of this world. I don't, it was almost like I don't want to live um, anymore like this. So it was a real surrender moment. And um, I wasn't sleeping, so it was a trip because I just kept, I, I was falling, literally, and I felt I was falling to my death. And I was just falling like off a building for a long time. And in that, I just surrendered and let myself go. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll die. And I was literally falling. And it like Superman, I swear to God, <laughs> Jesus came in and just scooped me up and brought me out. And, um, and after that, yeah, my whole world shifted. So that was just a a really wild experience, one of my experiences I've had where Jesus saved me. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you. I did also want to say about um, Barbo, who's, who spoke um, just yesterday in, in the school, one of the students had a, the exact same experience um, that you feared, Barbo, and um, her biggest fear was that she'd be humiliated in front of everyone. And um, she had been in prayer for her mass to come down. And, um, and something happened that made her feel completely humiliated and ashamed. And just the big tears and the crying came out um, at the lunch expression session table. And, and she was so ashamed and she just kept expressing, and I'm so ashamed, I feel this is horrible. This is, I have to leave. I have to leave La Casa right now, I have to leave. And we just said, it's okay, just stay with this feeling. We're with you, we love you. And we just held the space for her. And a lot of tears, and I, I could feel that this had never happened to her before. And just that risking for her to, to stay and then and we all held the space and 
then it, at the very end it brought her to a memory of um, of an experience that happened as a child and I think afterwards we were just all so grateful. All the students were in tears just seeing the process, how it works. There was nothing to do just to allow those feelings of hurt and shame um, to come up and be seen. And, and then, you know, that evening she, she went into a room and canceled some appointments that she had and some sessions that she was to be at. And I just said, that's fine. Like, now it's just time for you to allow everything to settle and, and call upon the Lord and we're with you and that's all we're ever doing for each other and that was your only part was was to face the fear that you fear the most and then to hand it over to spirit now he'll take you step by step into a whole new paradigm so mm -hmm. thank you thank you mm -hmm. yeah. I actually had another thought too for you, Barbara, because, and for several of you, because you are here for the same purpose, and many of you probably have the same um, experience and, and emotions, and it's, um, it's an opportunity. You can actually create a little sharing group, maybe a, a small group. Barbara and, you know, I don't know, Christine and Sabine came to mind, but anyone who really feels, you can private message each other um, and create a little group, share your emails, and <laughs> so that you have a little support group. Um, they can meet online every week and, and have this opportunity to share together. It's just so helpful. It's the way, actually. We, I, I've found that that's the only way, is to, to be able to let it up. That's the way out, so, yeah. Yeah, I encourage that. Okay, next on the list is uh, Muna. Go ahead, Muna. Yes, hi everyone. Um, Barbara, it's so lovely to see you because we met in Spain, the meeting that uh, Jim is talking about. I just want to acknowledge we were in the same room and I experienced Barbara as this really beautiful being. But I want to acknowledge you were the first, you, you think you're afraid, but you were the first to bring up sexual abuse, I didn't have the courage to say it in public. And when you said it, so many of us, like Jenny said, sort of came out, if you were, of the closet and started to say that that is part of what the mind is healing. But uh, um, I want to talk, it's never easy to share these things, the ego's always there. But I, um, I want to talk about um, yesterday and uh, what David said about you have to forgive the world, the world, and then, and then uh, you understand it. And I thought, wow, that's like a giant step. And it dawned on me that that's really what is required of me, taking this giant step and just accepting the atonement. I saw myself yesterday very clearly. Like I spoke about being um, in a battle of wills with God and always at loggerhead with with everyone around me. And I saw myself after we finished yesterday, I'm shouting at the screen. It's like, like, like an insane human being. I'm just screaming and shouting. And really the fight is with myself. I have not forgiven myself for what I've done. And, and, it, and it's, it's so deep and it's so overwhelming. And it occurs as if it's things that I've done in this world that caused the trauma. But I think it is the big ontological what I've done. And, um, and I feel exactly where you are, Barbara, except I am using this platform, you know, the, these retreats to open up and share. And the ego is always shouting at me, why did you say this and why did you say that? But actually, at the end of the day, I, I am opening up. I am sharing. I am receiving. I am listening to everyone else. And, it, and the connection is happening. And that is really the ultimate fear for the ego it's like it convinced me that connection is so dangerous communicating and connecting is so dangerous and so the critical voice is always there um so yeah i just wanted to share that in you know just um 
just that I have been stuck in, in wanting to stay in the world and fix it. I I'm, I'm just want to fix the world, fix my life in the world because I've, 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 I broke it. I crashed it. I, I spilled the milk. I spilled the beans. I broke something and it's irrevocable. And I'm just, I'm banging my head against the wall trying to fix it. And it's not really fixable. And really what there is for me is to forget the world and accept, take the giant step, accept the atonement and then let it be. So I've made that decision and I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Mila. Mm, beautiful. Okay, next up is uh, Lenny. Go ahead, Lenny. Hi, everyone. Hey. I just was thinking about something that happened today. I was outside in the garden and uh, we, I live in Sweden and we have a lot of snow. Winter has come now and it has been snowing for some days and now it's turned to uh, warmer degrees so it's starting to melt and uh, what has happened was that some of our lovely trees and bushes, they have uh, had so much heavy snow on their branches that they have broken. So my mom told me, you have to come and look on the the other side of the house, how it looks in the garden. And I went around and looked, and there were several trees and bushes that were had been like breaking apart, and several branches were really just yeah broken. And I had to take a saw and t take it off. And one tree was, I mean, they have been there for like seven, eight years, and it was so sad to see all that damage that were done and I I started to go into that oh I blame myself like you should have you should have understood that you should have taken the snow off and I was thinking this has never happened before we've lived here for 10 years and I, I started going into that wanting to change it and then after a while I remembered the movie from yesterday and I thought, well, now I'm doing it again. I want to change what's happening on the screen. And I thought, well, even if I had taken the snow off, maybe it had happened anyway. So it was just the movie had stayed with me. So I could quite quickly go into that to release the the blame that I was putting in my, on myself and also wanting to have it another way. Um, and... Um, the whole thing also reminded me of because I, I lately, um, yeah, it's not so long ago, a few months ago, I, I got the guidance that's also tied into, to the horses that I talked about yesterday that I was, yeah, starting to let them go, and then it was like the next step when that realization came was that well, if the horses go, then we're going to sell our house. We've lived here for 10 years and that's also something that I, I mean, it's nothing that I've thought about or like analyzed my way to. It's, it was more something that just came. And the funny thing is that as I realized that, well, this is the next step to take, it's like things around the house concerning our environment here, that's just starting to crumble, like the trees in the garden. It's like, you know, in the, what is it, uh, this movie with them, um, where they are sleeping or, or dreaming in different layers. Um, what's it called? I don't, it's Inception. Inception. Yeah, right. And, and when they, when they have been in the world too long, it starts like crumbling down. And that's just how it feels here. So many things around us. It's, it's like now the, the trees are broken in the garden and there are other things where we, roads where we used to ride with our horses for some reason, you can't go there anymore. The, the, the water has washed the road away or there's something else. The, the riding arena we have here in the village uh, the people who own it, they don't fix it up anymore and the whole uh, fencing is broken now. So it's so, 
it's just so funny to see the signs it's just to make it more obvious just that just to reinforce it because of course when when I when I then, then go into this okay now we're going to take the steps to sell the house I mean it's a huge project we've lived here for so long we have a lot of stuff and it's it's also the thing well what's then to happen and yeah so it's it's tempting to think well why just why why don't stay and just leave it as it is? It's it's easier that way, but I just feel it's that's not how it's meant to be. So those signs just make it obvious. It's like if I doubt it and something, the sign is coming and look at this. It's it's really meant. So yeah, and I just wanted to share that because it's it's just a great thing for us. It, it's with a house and and uh, well we um yeah we will have to sell it first and then we don't know where to go so <laughs> that's just yeah. gonna be really yeah interesting <laughs> so yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's good that you're trusting you're trusting too and uh that's what the course is teaching the world you see is is not your home and somewhere inside, deep inside, you know this is true. So, so while Muna is going to practice forgive it to understand it, you're going to practice uh, let it go and then see what comes in next. <laughs> That's good. This is, it's another version of the same, same thing. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful, Lainey. Thank you for sharing that. Mm. Thank you. Okay, next on the list that's ever growing is Sabina. Go ahead, Sabina. Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, me too. My heart starts accelerating when I start speaking in front of this audience, but I, but I do it anyway because it's a good practice and I always feel quite relieved afterwards. So um, I sent um, a question this morning to, to you, um, to David personally. Um, and it was about the letter from Dale, which David, you read, um, sent to us. Um, and this morning when I got up, I just read the letter again because I wanted to, and I have already done this, wanted to write him and, and send him Christmas meeting, Christmas greetings. Um, but when I was reading this letter, I was so overwhelmed by sadness there's such a deep, unbearable sadness. Um, and I have known, or I had known this sadness before. Um, and sometimes it comes in, in the form of rage, deep, really a big, deep rage. And I always thought it was connected to the relationship to my mother, which had never really worked. But now it came to my mind, it's this, perhaps this deep, deep sadness for, because of the separation from God and this deep, deep longing for the love of God. And then I, um, yeah, and then just to calm down, I went for a walk in the woods. Um, and then I asked Jesus, just show me what are the obstacles um, which I do not want to see or which I deny um, and which keep me, keep me separate from the love of God. And then when I came home, I just um, took the workbook, as you also often did, uh, David, as an oracle. And then I was shown the lesson number 197, which says, it can be but my gratitude I earn. And this made sense to me because when I was walking through the wood, I tried to be friendly and open and I often greet people which I meet when I'm walking and today nobody was greeting back and they just looked in another direction or had a very unfriendly uh, look on their faces or um, were uh, occupied with their own thoughts and I thought to myself, oh, this is not very friendly. Um, but I do not want to judge. I want to forgive them. 
But then it came to my mind after reading this lesson, it can be but my gratitude I earn that I forgave them, but not really. I wanted to have a gratification or a gratitude afterwards. They should greet back in the same way as I greeted them. So I wanted to have a gift afterwards, which is really insane. I mean, it had never come to my mind that this could happen. But it made perfectly sense. And then I read the commentary from by um, uh, these, um, this book, Journey Through the Workbook by Ken Wapnick. And I read the, his whole commentary to this. And this made perfectly sense. So, so this could be one of the perhaps many, many other obstacles to the love of God. When I take it always away, the gift from them, which I practically give to myself, then I can, nobody has anything of it. There is no re reward at all. And so this was an eye-opener. But at the same time, I'm, I'm still deeply, deeply, deeply touched. Not right now, because I'm not really in the feeling now, because there is still some shame to express this in front of this audience. But I do it anyway, so I want to encourage everybody. It needs practice, 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 but then it gets easier and easier, and it's good. Expressing, sharing, it's the best way to heal. And so this is what I'm feeling right now as well. So, yeah, thank you for giving the opportunity to do this on this online retreat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sabine. Yeah, we've all had those moments where it's this deep sadness. Sadness for no reason is kind of the way it felt, like mm -hmm. just deep, like sadness for the whole universe. Mm -hmm. Like you're just, the whole universe is sad and you're feeling it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's actually a natural part of the awakening. Like you have to move through that cloud of, uh, of regret, of, mm -hmm. of sadness, disappointment. I even remember, I, I watched... Um I think a, a late night show in America here. Um, I think it's a comedian called Louis C.K. He went on the show and he, it was like um, like a comedy. Everybody was laughing about his jokes and everything. And in the middle of the whole the joke, suddenly he started to say, you know that, you know, on the Friday night after work, you drive home and all of a sudden, you just want to pull over and this deep, deep sadness just struck you and you just want to cry your heart out without knowing even why. And you cry and you cry and all the audience were laughing and laughing. And I thought he wasn't joking there at all. He was letting some part coming out and just to express sometimes this, this sadness just hits you and he has no idea what it was and, and yet the whole audience can relate but they relate in a way that wow it's universal you know I'm not the one problematic it's universal but I was just thinking it is a blessing that we can actually be able to talk about it here and knowing that you know, there is help and we, it's not even personal help where we have to do something about it. It's just to be able to say it like you did, send the email first and then just to be able to say this is, this is part of the experience as long as we're still dreaming and being here and it's just very, very deep, very deep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking okay, of it. Another hand? Oh. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just thinking. I was just thinking of a movie we watched. Um, Susan and I in the house this weekend. The, the old movie, The Color Purple, actually, and it feels like everyone is going through letting go of of the world or moving on from form and I felt for me that movie was really like in the past it was uh, very like hard like horrible feelings to watch the movie and now yesterday we watched it and Eric came and watched the ending with us which is just so beautiful with the miracle and the, the forgiveness happening and everyone is like in love and in lightness and everyone is actually joining while all the way through the movies, this distance and this separation and huge fear that is like playing out in 
very, very distorted way, distorted forms of the world, like um, abuse in many different ways. And um, yeah, so just to watch for me to, in the past when I watched it, it was grabbing me, but when I watched it this time, it was like, it's already gone, it's over. Like this world is over and and uh, yeah, the symbols everyone is talking about, letting it up and moving on, like Lenny, the, the guidance to move on, maybe to another place, is symbolic of, yeah, it's that the past is to be taken very lightly and, and just to move on and yeah. Yeah. Up next is Patrick. Go ahead, Patrick. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Um, yeah. I can't see uh, David and everybody. Do you see us now? Oh, there you are. Okay. Uh, I can really relate to uh, almost everything that's being said, and especially uh, by people that have a hard time expressing themselves. Um, I, um, a lot of times I just feel uh, irritable and like, uh, you know, annoyed by whatever is happening. If it's, you know, if it kind of rubs me the wrong way. And I realize that's sort of a superficial um, um, covering over some fear that I have. Um, and I, I'm really sort of enjoying the idea of living in the moment and, and in addition to that, not feeling a need to uh, change anything, that I don't need to do anything. And that if something is, um, bothers me or irritates me, probably uh, something that maybe I need to forgive, I need to be more forgiving and uh, realize the script is already written. So I don't have to, you know, I don't have to plan too far ahead. I'm trying to be, learn to discern between what's coming from spirit and what is um, just my egotistical need to control. Uh, I'm, I have a plan of, you know, moving to Mexico, but um, there's a lot of steps that, that I'm not sure how they're going to, you know, what, in what way they're going to happen. I have to, I have people and things here that I need to organize, you know, to do that. But, uh, but I have to trust and, um, yeah, the, the thing I'm sharing, I, I'm, I'm just realizing that, it, um, I mean, I realized intellectually it was valuable, but I was always uh, putting it off or waiting until some perfect, you know, situation where I would be safe to do it. But um, uh, now I'm just going to do it. I'm not, I am arranging some things so that I have, you know, a safe situation, but I really want, I really appreciate this opportunity to share with, everyone you know this much and um i'm very grateful to you all thank you thank you patrick thank you it's a big step you know i know you're looking at some big steps but just just stay present to stay present with it and know that it'll all just unfold and you don't have to push it you can just let the one step reveal itself and then the next and the next I was just sitting here myself too. We were talking here in the house. Uh, what a mind-blowing year. Such an expansive year this is. We didn't foresee all the miracles. We didn't foresee all these. It's just been like floods and floods of miracles. And, and all of you being on these online retreats, we started in January and here we are in December. So it's been a full year of these online retreats. And we've had uh, our Living Miracle TV show, you know, we got Spirit TV coming, and and actually, the, I want to mention too, the panel that's next to me, uh, over the years they've all done their share of traveling. We all four have actually done quite a bit of traveling, but actually 2019, 
looks like it's going to involve quite a bit more. In fact, it wasn't so many months ago where I was here, sitting here just saying, uh, I'm going to come to where you are, and I already have been to South Africa, but I, I actually got my paper out today, and I thought, oh my goodness, there's a lot of places uh, that I, for my world tour 2018 that I didn't reach. Uh, Catherine knows I reached you down there in South Africa. I had a great time down there, but um, I'm re I'm going to stay open because uh, uh, we have this book coming out. This moment is your miracle, and you know I in all these years I've never done a book tour, uh, and so I thought well instead of going to bookstore to bookstore maybe I would just <laughs> go around and visit some of my friends, and then maybe we could go into a bookstore together and do a little chat and draw some people around us with our happiness and oh, joy. Wouldn't that be fun? That's yeah. like a spontaneous book tour where you just go visit <laughs> friends and then you, you know, go out to a, a bookstore and have a cup of coffee and, and start laughing and sharing the joy and before you know it, people gather around you and say, what are you laughing about? You know, and then we say, well, actually, here's a book here and you know, we we'll just talk. But Actually, Francis has been working for two years on a movie, and it's just ready to come out. So, Francis is getting geared to, to go on lots of travels. <laughs> Jenny's been working on This Moment is Your Miracle, and Jenny and Greg are getting geared up to maybe go and do workshops. And Ricky's just getting ready to launch uh, on a world tour in February. So, it seems like uh, you're, you're all over our screen, uh, and sometimes you come off the screen to visit us, but sometimes we come off the screen and visit <laughs> you too. <laughs> we show up in your living room. <laughs> so I hope, I hope there's a lot more of that. That's my prayer in 2019, that, uh, that we can have some of those holy encounters where we can actually hug you. We can actually have those long hugs, uh, as well as this great digital experience. It would be great to have some long mm. hugs. Okay, we can maybe go back. Jeff, are there any other hands still up? Oh, there are lots of hands. <laughs> uh, let's see, next up is uh, Susan Jameson. Go ahead, Susan. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Oh, good, good. good. Hi. Well, first I just want to say how grateful I am too for the full year of retreats. And I don't see you either, David. Um, <laughs> so I'll... I think I have to talk. And if I talk, then I, it comes on the yeah. screen. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> see, it works every time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know I'm one of many who've done all the 12 months. So that... <laughs> and it's been a great gift. I'm so grateful. I'm really grateful. And I tell everybody about Lady Miracles and about you. You know, I do. And uh, the whole, this retreat has been miraculous, you know, as all of them have been, but this has been very special. And uh, I shared with Jenny a few days ago an experience I recently had, which is incredibly embarrassing. <laughs> Jenny, <laughs> but I'll share a little. Because, because the Holy Spirit will work with me in extreme ways, but it can be also extremely funny. And it, if you look at it through the lens of the ego, it, it appears tragic and very sad. But if you look through the eyes of Christ, then it's, it's hilarious and fun. Um, so in brief, because I know we went on for a while, Jenny, and I didn't share the whole thing. But I had an experience, like, like in the movie, um, where I was invited to offer um, a service with three other people. It was a celebration of light service. And when they call on me, it's always to share something about the course. So, you know, I prayed on it, and I felt like sharing the light has come, not the whole lesson, but just a part of it, and also from the ancient psalm. And we did a little uh, forgiveness exercise, and I was so happy and so enthusiastic and full of joy and the last to go. 
So I stand up and we're all laughing and then I start to read. And as I read, I'm okay for the first paragraph, but then I start feeling this woo feeling. And I stepped back and sat down. And um, the two others were a little concerned because I kind of tripped back, but they thought, oh, I just tripped. But actually I knew there was something going on that I was out of control. So I picked up my book and I went to the side to drink a little water. And then I quietly walked out and, you know, I just felt this other big woo. And I, I said, my, you know, what? <laughs> you know, I'm talking to God. Like, what's going on? Why here? Why now? You know, but okay, I, all I could do was surrender. There was nothing I could do to control it. I tried. I tried. And I went down. I actually called out for water. And the manager of the church came around, and he, he actually held me, and I went down, um, like in the movie. Um, but I was watching it like a movie, too. I knew what was happening. But apparently I missed maybe 15 minutes because the one of the – well, first I'll go back real quick and say that the last words I said were, um, the light has come, I have forgiven the world. You know, those are the words in the book. And I went down thinking, well, you know, I have forgiven the world. If I'm dying now, let it be. You know, I'm going. Um, so I went down, and then when I opened my eyes, there were a bunch of people around me. And, you know, I don't go to doctors. I know there's nothing wrong with me. And I was taken to a hospital. And at the hospital, the head minister said that I was talking you know, I wasn't making sense, and there was something really wrong with me. So they, I, was, I was going home, I thought. But then I was given uh, a test, um, not the MRI, the other one. And they came back and said, well, there's an abnormality on your brain. So we're sending you for an MRI. And I'm like, there are plenty of people who think I have an abnormal brain, but, you know, I didn't really want to do it. But they... I just kept hearing, surrender, just do it, just do it. So I'm taken to this Berkshire Medical Center. I've never spent a night, you know, in a hospital. I walk in the room only with the course. I gave everything else to my friend to keep. I said, I don't need it. I kept the book. And I walk in and there's another woman there who had a stroke. And she said, I know you. I, I'm going to cry. She said, I know you. And... She said a, a priest had come in this that morning, Sunday morning, a week ago, a week ago now, well, not this early. And she said, I asked for the priest to come back, but he didn't come back. He's, she said, you're here. And I said, oh, I'm, I'm here with you. I'm just, you know, I'm with you. However, I, you know, when she started talking like that, and she said she was suicidal and depressed and anxious, um, she was having a very, very hard time. I said, well, we're going to pray. And I opened the book to lesson 41. And lesson 41 was God goes with me wherever I go. And, but everything in that lesson was for both of us, you know, not just for Sarah, but for me too. I mean, not Sarah, I'm sorry. Whoops, Lisa. And um, that kept happening. So it was, a, it was, the presence was so much there. And I thought, okay, you know, now I can go home. And then overnight, the nurses rushed in and said, my heart was leaking something. You know, I mean, there was one thing after another, which I just had to keep surrendering to. But then when the MRI results came back, of course, there was no problem. And when the heart test came back, there were no problems. But holy encounters kept coming in. And I'm like, you know, I, I had no plan whatsoever in spending, it was Sunday, three days in a hospital. And I guess, I, you know, I'm ready to leave. I'm ready to leave. But then there was something else. There was something else to do. You know, and I know that if I had The Course in Miracles or if I had... Um, the new book, This Moment Is Your Miracle With Me, I would have been selling them as I go. Because I even had an Egyptian doctor come down and sit with me. And we're talking. 
but we're talking not, I ask him if he's Muslim, and he goes, no, 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 I'm Christo, Christo. So then we have another conversation about Christ. So that's what happened. I couldn't, I wanted to leave this situation, but I couldn't <laughs> because they kept finding something to talk about. And then when they tested me, there was nothing. And then finally, this beautiful African doctor comes in, I think it was Tuesday. She crosses her arms and she goes, why are you here? Why are you here? <laughs> and I try to explain the story, but I said, <laughs> you know, it was just preposterous because there was nothing wrong with me. And then, and I mentioned this to Stephen briefly, I even had a stress test. So you have to know that I, I never had these tests. I never go to doctors. However, there was an unconscious belief, possibly there because my mother and my father died suddenly of heart attacks at very young ages. And I'm just about there at that age. So, you know, there must have been something there for me to receive all the tests like that and to be cleared. But um, all in all, it was, it was a joyous experience. So, I, you know, everything that's been shared on this retreat is true. It's like spirit will meet you. We had so much fun in that hospital room because we had the holy encounter as roommates. And then everybody who came in was sharing with, you know, these holy encounters. And it was just a moment when I was going in this big machine for a stress test that my heart was jumping and I was crying. Uh, really thinking about what my family went through and all the sadness that we're talking about, you know, and then I won't go on anymore because then I had five more doctors come in and they were sure there was something wrong with me. And I said, there's nothing. <laughs> so, you know, I am so grateful for all of you. And, uh, you know, it's beyond words what you've gifted me and with everyone. So I was very nervous to share this story. I feel very embarrassed. But, you know, it happened. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Jenny told us, and I was hoping you would come on and share. Yeah. So that was a whim. You just uh, answered a prayer. <laughs> Beautiful. I love you. Mm. 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 Okay. Next up is Burned. Go ahead, Burned. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yay. Hi, Hi Burned. <laughs> <laughs> well, so good to see you. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm sometimes having um, difficulties explaining to, to friends or to others um, about my spiritual path or yeah what is really going on and um yeah it's been very interesting that the experiences i have when i share it um and it's very contrary to what i expect oftentimes <laughs> so yeah it's it's like yeah the reflections are are almost always completely different <laughs> than I expect and um, I have a very good friend who I didn't feel very connected to in the late last month and uh, or even last year and I didn't feel to to go out with him again um, much or to talk with him um, we had a good connection because we lived together when we were students and and uh, yeah and now we're re-establishing the connection again and and it was very interesting he asked me like yesterday can we have a talk about um yeah that's there's something going on with me and i know you you can probably help me with that and and so today we went for a walk and i just shared a lot of my insights with him and it was so so beautiful because I have always thought he's very unconscious and very much listening to the ego and and yeah, so 
it's not that I have, had written him off, but in a way it was like, okay, it's maybe this relationship is not for me anymore. Or, and yeah, and I see like the reflection is completely different. Like, yeah, I, the more I change my mind, the more everything around me is changing. Like, yeah. And there's this fear of really like, telling people about this path but i'm i'm really um i'm really so grateful for everything and so there's a kind of urge to or a, a willingness to to express it to others and to share the good news so to say and and yeah the more i can do it the more i get these beautiful reflections and and yeah i was so grateful today for for this opportunity to share and and yeah it's it's been very very interesting like, lately <laughs> yeah Fern, you're such a great uh, witness and demonstration because i know we uh we had that talk and you were saying you just keep having these insights and you just keep expanding and then just out of love you know you you start to share with your girlfriend more and more of, of who you are and what you're going and then oftentimes you have this expectation like well now she leaves me uh, after I share the next one she leaves me but you you have had like all of us have had to have great courage to stay authentic with the truth uh, authentic with your expansion your experiences and and uh, I think that we started off this whole retreat talking quite a lot with Mary uh, about the people pleasing and she was sharing how deep that was. She was a very social person and, and, and whether we're a social person or not, I was a loner and very shy, it's just so deep and it's so profound that, that we all have to come to those points where the Spirit wants to speak something through us. Like, the Spirit's doing with you right now, with everyone, and then we have to let the chips fall where they may. And it's so opposite of the ego who's trying to keep people like as part of its little menagerie, you know, it wants to keep the family members in place, he wants to keep the girlfriend in place, keep, keep the friends in place, and here uh, is a friend of yours really calling it, drawing it out of you, and, uh, and then you seem to always be surprised that, uh, like with your girlfriend, she comes right back in towards you time and time again when you've uh, really spoken your heart. And to me, that's, that is an authentic healing expression of relationship, uh, which is so different from telling people what they want to hear, mm. which we see in families and politicians and so forth, where people are just mouthing words to different people, they're saying different things. There's no consistency, there's no congruency. They're just trying to, to get approval or to be liked and to keep a relationship. But you're, you're just being so authentic and we're all, we're all right with you. We just, you know, oh, whenever we see you on the screen, there's Bernd, you know, we, we feel you and we are so with you in this authentic journey that you're taking. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, oh, so sweet. Your smile yeah. lights up the whole world. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> he is adorable. <laughs> it's beautiful. Oh. Precious. Oh. Hmm. Okay, moving on. It's uh, Sue Powell. Go ahead, Sue. Hi. Hi, Sue. Hi, Sue. Yeah. Um, there's one. There's a couple of things I want to say. And the first one was, um, I'm so grateful, Francis, for you. <laughs> and when you were speaking about when on Friday night, when you you recalled that time when you had a dream and your mum was in the dream and. In my words, you just wanted to phone her to say, look, I love you. And all you got was her doing this. 
and um, and then you, I loved your honesty about how you then had to sort of say, oh, hang on, no, and um, even stop the call. And, and there's something that really spoke to me about that because it seems like for all my life, until my mum died about five years ago, I was so angry and so mad with her. And I had all this stuff around. She should have loved me. She was never the mum that I wanted. And, and then in more recent years, maybe before she died now, I can't remember, but I think especially since coming across the course, I really realized, and what I realized on Friday night was all I wanted to say to her was, I want to love you. <laughs> Let me love you. Whereas all my life, I was just feeling, she should have loved me. Why don't you love me? And even if she said on the few times, I love you, I just never believed her because I see now it was the bigger picture and she was like a symbol. But I've, mm. I've never really trusted love. Mm. And um, again, that really came up for me on my first devotional stay with Living Miracles. And coming from a Christian tradition, I... I thought that I believed that God is love, but actually on that devotional, I realized that I don't even believe God loves me. I don't even believe in God's love. And so it's been quite a path, but there was just something on Friday that seems to really shift something in my mind of not being like, oh, I'm the victim daughter. I never had the mother that I wanted. To realizing that somewhere deep within me, that's all I want to do. That's all I wanted to do with her, and now that's all I really want to do when I can get all the other rubbish out of the way is all I really want to do is be love and extend that love. Mm. So that seemed to be really, it seemed like a tiny shift, but it feels so big. <laughs> and, um, and then what seems to be one of the things that get in, gets in the way was really um, portrayed so much in the movie and the team that, that was given is let all things be exactly as they are. Because I have a big no, like the no comes first. No, I don't want to accept things as they are. I still don't want to accept things as they are. So, and what's showing up here is something in form, which is somehow going to be a big lesson to me. So I have a question really. Um, like what does that really mean, accept things as they are um, in a practical way? Because obviously I wasn't accepting things. I have for nearly 60 years, I haven't accepted things as they are. And I was sort of laughing to myself just now thinking, I don't want to take the next 60 years to learn how to do it. And, um, but with practical things, like there's a, there's a kitchen here where I'm staying and it really is such a trigger for me. I, I can't stand it. <laughs> and I'm not accepting it as it is. So when things seem to come up in form that I have resistance to, or if I'm resisting a situation where it's around something that seems bigger than a kitchen, it's about love and happiness and... Yeah, I just wondered if I, I've, some, some things have come to me in this question in my mind, what do I do when I'm triggered? What can I do when I'm feeling irritable? What, what other things that people have said on, these, on this retreat this weekend? And, and I want to be able to say like what she said in the film, when quite late in the film, the father says, I want you to be happy or something. And she said, I am happy. And she said, and it was always there. I just didn't see it. So I wondered if anyone feels to share anything about how I can really see. Well, maybe I can start um, <clears throat> just about what you're saying, Sue, around accepting things as they are. I know that, you know, it. it is something, you know, originally when I was um, on the past and very much wanted to abide the form rules like okay this is what Jesus says I shouldn't I shouldn't judge or but 
it was very hard, you know, to to actually be able to do that. Gradually, I think over the time, I found a way. Like I find something more important than how the how the things at the level of form turn out to be. So instead of practically, like when you ask practically how, how to do that, for myself, instead of, you know, like a, we have so many things every day, we have decisions to make, communications, people, we live with people all the time. And for me, I started to really wanted to pay attention to something more important than things are out of control places are dirty or I was not respected. You know, I started to say, okay, what is truly important I have to hold on to and that is this relationship. And that is to, to hold, to, to find a way to see something shiny in this other person. And that becomes my absolute focus for a long time. Because I, I think if without something else to replace, I will be bombarded by interpretations of how, how things around me are going to be. Why do they say these things? They don't include me, they don't love me, I did something wrong or things they don't follow, everything. It could be like... But then I, I noticed there is a huge paradigm shift when I started to say, regardless of anything, people will never change. People will never be what I want them to be. And what is important to me, you know, in this interaction? And what is important to me throughout the day? What do I want? And I started to say, okay, I, I, maybe I don't want things to be clean. Or I don't want them to be exactly how I want. I want to see them as I see Jesus in my heart, because that makes me really happy. So that becomes like a, a thing to focus on. And the more I focus on that, the more it makes me happy and the, the more the world's at the level of form falls apart. So to me, it wasn't like fall apart, leave behind, don't even judge anything. It was like a, a shift of focus and priority in my heart. Then truly it becomes an experience and nothing really at the level of form means anything to you and to, to your daily experience. Nothing can change, nothing can affect you, nothing can touch you. Yeah. Yeah, because the ego can take a hold too of, I have to accept things as they are in form, you know, and you get so fixated on having to accept things as they are. Well, we can really translate it. I was just thinking when Francis spoke, we can, you know, accept things as God is keep accepting God in your mind and then you take the focus on how the form is and you, you come from an experience. Yeah, I think it's, it's quite interesting because a, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, uh, I was talking with Jason and everyone in the community is practicing this, let all things be exactly as they are, let, let me give it over to you and and we were in the middle of a long conversation and um, we have this place at Camus where the metaphysical center is and one of the streets um, we're, we're told by the little town do not park on this street during the winter because the snow plows have to keep the street clear even though it's a huge street it's very wide it's not like a narrow street but it's the rule do not park there so I think uh, we you know dutifully followed the laws, didn't park uh, along the street, and then the post office across the street decided to uh, repair their parking lot, so they pulled all their vehicles out all along the street. The snow came down, and there was just piles of snow out there, and Jason was looking out, going, hmm, what should I do about this pile of snow now? Uh, should I just let all things be exactly <laughs> as they are and watch this pile of snow or should I go over to the post office, the United States Post Office and say, you, you parked your car here and now we've got a pile of snow. The thing about rules, you know, this is a world that was made by the ego and so the ego made up all the laws and all the rules of the whole world and, and it, it varies 
uh, like what a clean kitchen is or what a dirty kitchen, it's a perceptual decision. It's an interpretation. Your interpretation of a clean, tidy kitchen may be different than a brother or a sister, they may say. I don't see a problem. But what you find is that as you, like Francis was saying, you keep coming in and focus on what really is important, the love that you've been talking about, the peace, the happiness, then, then when you have that focus and it becomes your soul focus, then you can let all things be exactly as they are. Because the ego is the wish that something be different. The ego's plan of salvation is that if something in form would change, I would be happy. Mm -hmm. If my mother had been more loving and, and affectionate and told me I was loved, I would be happy. If, if uh, the snow uh, wasn't piled up and everybody was following the rules in, of the city, I would be happy. But once you go deeper inside into forgiveness, it's not like you have to break the rules. It's not like you have to conform and keep the rules. You actually are lifted up and your mind transcends the rules. Jesus transcended death. And so he could be calm and gentle and kind, even when in the end they were bringing, in the world's perspective, false charges and they put him on a cross and they put a crown on his head and the blood was dripping down, in his mind he had transcended the rules of this world because he, he didn't give his mind over to the ego. So it's not about rebelling and breaking the rules and neither is it about conforming, mm. but it's actually going inside, like Francis was saying, and that lifts you up. So that in the case, like with Jason, you know, I said, well, you know, you, you'll know what to do, but you, you want to just be at peace with this piled snow. And, and then the, the more you go inward, the more that's how that happens. That's, that's actually what meditation is about, is to, to sink deep in your mind beneath these riotous, raucous thoughts that are wanting to judge everything. And then you do have the power to transcend. And that's what we're doing. That's why we're sharing our joy. That's why we do projects together, that's why we collaborate, that's why we communicate, that's why we expose and stay clean, to stay clean in our mind is all part of transcendence and therefore we're not locked into to those mm. struggles, those mm. mental struggles. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it just took me back, David, to when you said um, this weekend, um, see no error, this is what it's the same thing in my mind, because um, I used to think of see no error as either I was making mistakes or then when I came into leadership it was like, well, I have to, you know, help people remind them and stay in function and use the structure for the mind training. But then that's just a phase, you know. And then um, just another example was Emily came into my room last night after we had already said our good night. She said, can I come back in? And I said, yeah. And she was just... She was just going through something, and I said, it's, it's nothing, it's okay, just go through it. And then um, I just asked her if she wanted to meditate with me, and so we meditated, and she said, I said, how are you feeling? She said, better, but I'm not getting any answers. And I said, oh, it's just like journaling, just allow all the thoughts, you know, to just come through the mind, come through the mind, and now that you've done that, let's just go into the field together. <laughs> let's just, we're ready now. We've just been through 15 minutes of crazy thoughts. And then in that experience of peace, and we both dropped in, and you can feel it without even speaking to your brother, because that's the presence of God. And where two or more are gathered, it's even that much more powerful. And that's what you bring into that kitchen, or whatever, wherever you're going, that is usually your trigger. I went through a period where Facebook was triggering me so much. Was I going out seeking witnesses of guilt and pain? And now I'm going out seeking witnesses of love, but that's going to come from the peace in my heart before I look, before I go in, before I open up to a brother. See no era has just expanded for me, so I'm really grateful for this retreat. Yeah, that's just beautiful, because I, I like when David talked about the rules, because 
even the, um, Jesus defines miracles in A Course in Miracles as it's miracles just showing you that the laws of this world does not abide to you. Like Susan shares in her experience, you know, all kinds of things that can happen to the body as if there's a cause, and there's a rules, but then when you perform miracles, there is no rule that can bind you in this world. And that's, I think, really is the essence of us all coming together, joining in this uplifted place. Because I was telling David, actually a couple of days ago, I woke up in the morning from a dream that felt really real. Because um, I had a lot of flying dreams in the, in the evening, like in the dream I, I fly. And, and in that particular dream, I was doing a workshop teaching everybody how to fly and I was doing the demonstration and and the whole the, the whole hour of workshop I was talking for 55 minutes about you don't have to learn how to fly you can already do it but you just have to believe nothing is binding you to this earth and so for about 55 minutes and everybody like, can you show us how to practice? I said, no, five minutes, now go, go fly. You don't need, you don't need, all you need to do is to believe you don't, you're not bound by the, by the gravity actually. And, and, and yet I was thinking that's what A Course in Miracles is. Jesus talked about miracles as I experience to show that we're not bound by time and space and rules and that is still within the realm of perception so it's not it's not beyond our experience but yeah I just feel this is your question is is really perfect because in within the realm of the problem we cannot solve it and we're not mean to consistently be bound there to try to sort things out and all our here to do is to lift above, way above, and they say we're not, we're not part of that realm. Great Uh, there it is, we go full circle, we're back to Einstein. Yeah. The problem cannot be solved at the level yeah. of the problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Soar, like you're doing your workshop in the dream. <laughs> no, just fly. <laughs> don't, don't think you can be bound. Don't right. practice, just fly. <laughs> <laughs> don't pretend you can't. <laughs> right, don't pretend you can't. <laughs> Yeah, we're giving a big boost, like we have this uh, base camp, but you've got boost. We're giving a big boost to faith, we're mm. giving a big boost to trust, mm. and we're giving a thumbs down to just pure repetition for the sake of repetition, just mm. doing your Hail Marys over and over for 15, 25,000 times, Hail Mary full of grace. You know, it's like put your heart into it, really believe. Mm. I do remember many years ago, before I even got into spirituality, I read this thing online one time and it was, it was just amazing. They said uh, probably the, one of the greatest mus magicians of all time was Houdini. And Houdini, you know, would, they would, lock, would chain him up and they would put him under water and they would put him into crates and everything. He was kind of known as a magician, as an escape artist. So I thought that was kind of a ten interesting Houdini the escape artist. So right before Houdini died, I think it was the story was he, he said to his wife, I'm going to prove that, that there is something beyond this world. And she said, how? And he said, after I die, I will come to you and I will show you as my last escape artist that, that there's more than this world, more than dying. And so I remember that he passed away and then uh, some time elapsed and his, uh, his wife went to a seance and then they were, had the candles going and they were all quiet at the seance and, and here comes Houdini uh, and he only spoke 
one word in the seance, but it was a very important word. He went, believe. Mm. And he reached her. And, mm. and what we're emphasizing is the power of the mind. You have an enormously powerful mind. And you have faith. And you have trust. And you deserve freedom. And you deserve joy and happiness. And what we're saying is, don't give yourself over to like vain repetitions where you just are repeating a word or an affirmation and, and kind of like Dorothy, you know, with the clicking her heels repeatedly over and over, there's no place like home. It was the faith that brought Dorothy home. It wasn't the, the slippers. It wasn't the clicks. And we're, you, we do have to go beyond even the repetitions of the Course. A Course in Miracles is like a trampoline. It's a springboard to have you spring up rise up in faith mm. that, that you are one with God, that, mm. that you are holy, mm. and that you are holy forever, and that is in your heart, and nothing can take that away from you. So that is what I want to leave you with Aww. from the birth of Aww. holiness. Okay. Believe. <laughs> Have faith. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> yes. <Aww. laughs> <laughs> it's <Beautiful>. so sweet. <laughs> oh. oh, sweet. It's sweet. Thank you all so much for joining us. Oh, thank, oh, you. So yeah. thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Ha, 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 ha.